Hello, everyone. Good noon. Konnichiwa. My name is Linda Stephen, and I am here for the Blue Stem Montessori Elementary School's 1,000 Cranes for Lincoln's Healing. Today, I'm going to show you how to fold an origami crane. Uh, first of all, let me show you, and we're going to go through it step by step. So here is a very large crane. I'm an origami artist, and I work with Japanese paper. Behind my head here, you can see one of my artworks, which is called Landing in Nebraska, and that features a different kind of origami crane, my own invention. And those are cranes that come to Nebraska landing uh, on the Platte River in the springtime. The crane uh, in Japan means has a, is a symbol of long life, of longevity, longevity and health. Um, it's said in myth that the crane lives for 1,000 years. Now, that is a long time. But in reality, um, the crane, well, the cranes in Nebraska live about 40 years. The tall cranes of Japan that are about six feet tall, they live for 60 or 70 years. So, you know, 400 years ago, if the cranes came back and forth, and they always come back and forth to the same place, um, then people would just think that it was the same cranes that came back for, you know, forever. So it's like they live for a thousand years. Um, and there is also a myth that if you, or uh, tradition, that if you make 1,000 cranes, that your wish or your prayers will come true. Now, if you do a 1,000 of anything that takes you a very long time in much concentration, then probably your wish or your dream will come true. So today we are going to be making the 1,000 cranes, the blue stem, the students and teachers of blue stem Montessori Elementary School, in Lincoln, Nebraska, they came up with the idea that they have been studying origami. Um, origami is the Japanese art of folding paper. Ori means fold and kami means paper. And they have been studying origami this spring. And in order to um, do something while they're stuck at home to help with with Lincoln and everyone else to raise the spirits, they decided to take on the, the task, the big challenge of 40, folding 1,000 cranes, and they asked the community to join in. As of this morning, they are at 874, and just on Monday, it was 200 and something. So the kids are doing a great job, and the city of Lincoln has also contributed. So let's get going. I'm going to switch to the table. All right. So we're going to start with a square piece of paper. Um, it can be origami paper like this. This is two-sided paper. Uh, it could also be some office paper or notebook paper or a sticky note. Um, something, it should be a square, which means so that every side is equal all the way along. So, the first thing is, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> if you have um, two-sided paper, have the color side on the outside. And we're going to fold our paper in half. This is called in half, so close the white side and have the color on the outside. Fold it in half into a rectangle. Now it's easiest to do this on a flat surface. So I use my fingernails, but you can also, if you don't have long or strong fingernails, you can also use the back of a utensil like a plastic knife or the back of a spoon. And then next step you're going to do is open your paper back again and with the color on the outside fold it in half again into a rectangle and 
and try to have your crease make sure that the edges of your paper are lined up. In origami, uh, precision is very important, especially at the beginning of your process. Right now what we're doing here, and have this crease be nice and strong. That's why it's helpful to use your fingernails or some utensil or a letter opener to fold that along. These are called pre-creases. Okay, now we're going to go back to the square shape again and turn your paper over. And now on the white side of the paper, or the opposite side that you were doing before, we're going to fold your paper in half into a triangle. So again, try to make sure that you line up your tips of the triangle very carefully so they line up and all the way along the side. Don't have it be like this kind of off fold. Have it lined up very carefully all the way along. This is called a pre-crease and it's going to make, these are steps that are going to make the later steps in the crane easier. Okay, then now we have our triangle, open it back up to the square again and the opposite direction we're going to fold over into a triangle also. So bring your tips together and then fold along, crease, and I will take questions at the end. There we go. So now you can open it back up to the square again and here, I'm going to show you on another piece of paper. So we first, we did basically an X, rectangle, rectangle, and then we flipped it over and we had triangle, triangle, and then turn it over to the colored, so the colored side is up. And now your paper kind of wants to stand there all by itself. Think of it as a little tiny umbrella. And now you're going to think square. You're going to let the creases that you did before Stay where they are. This is not a new crease. You fold your paper down and it becomes a square shape, a small square shape, and it's two layers. Do you see that? And the earlier creases that you did are critical. Now, I will say, um, going back to the triangle, it's easiest if you do the triangle on the opposite side from where you did your rectangles. However, if you did not, if you folded rectangle, rectangle, triangle, triangle, and all of your creases are going the same direction, um, it can still work. You just have to, it's, the paper is not going to fold itself down as much. You just still need to think square because you're going to have to reverse that fold. You can still get down to the same square shape. If you flip your paper over, it will kind of want to fold down all by itself. All right, so now we have, this is called a primary base in origami. And next step we're going to do is we're going to kind of make this into a, a little bit of a kite shape. So here's a piece of paper. It's hard to see it. We're going to do a crease along here and a crease along here. Take the outside edge uh, okay, now this is a critical point. You have two ends. One end is closed. Do you see that? And the other end has open flaps. Uh, we need to close the flaps. A tornado is coming. Close the house down. No open doors. Um, if you... So, see on the flap end? That pointy end? That's where you're going to fold your kite shape in. So take the outside edge and fold it to the line of symmetry or almost to the center line. This is the line of symmetry right here. Leave a little bit of space 
like about one millimeter or a sixteenth of an inch. And we're going to repeat this pattern. Um, well, repeat it three times, but you're doing it a total of four times. So on the left side, if or the other side that you just did, so bring just the top layer. Again, fold it into a kind of, um, you're folding a kite shape. You take the outside edge and fold it to the line of symmetry. Like that. And then when you're done with that, turn it over to the other side and do the same thing again on the back. And it's best if you leave just a little bit of space. So the line of symmetry is the center of your paper. Origami is math that you can hold in your hand. Now this crane pattern is a traditional one and it's been around for something like 800 years. Uh, but origami is used in lots of new inventions now in our time. Okay, so we end up here with the kite shape. Now, it is springtime in Nebraska, and I am seeing robins hopping all over the yard and in the tree. Oh, and I happen to have a robin's blue paper with me right here. And I have not yet seen, oh, I have seen some eggs. And what comes out of the eggs? baby chicks. So we're going to open at the where you closed it down here. Grab the end point and pull it open. Here. Pull it open and it looks like a baby bird asking for food. It says, food! Feed me! Feed me! See? So you open it back up kind of to the square shape again. And now what you just did with the kite shape, we are going to reverse that crease. So just tuck it inside. Pretend it's a baby bird and the sides of your paper are going to go in and feed the baby bird. Now this is somewhat tricky, but here the important thing is this is not a new crease. You're using the existing crease. And then you can kind of smooth it out. Either with your fingernails or the back of... Or you can use strong fingers to press along. But that is not a new crease. Now we're going to turn it over. And you can just leave this open like that. And on the other side, we still have our kite shape. So go down to the tip of the kite and open it up, pull it open, and the baby bird says, feed me, feed me, feed me. Open, open, see, doesn't it look like a baby bird in a nest? And kind of pull it along and tuck in, reverse those folds that you did before. I'm having problem. Okay, see if you can see your fold. And then tuck in the outside, kind of pretend you're feeding the baby bird mouth. Like that. And then lay it down. And I'm going along here, but this is, I'm just solidifying those creases. All right. The crane is a bird that often stands in the water to find food, and they have very long, thin legs, um, unlike turkey legs. So at the other end, so you will find at one end you have a couple of flaps that we'll call legs. See those? We're going to make them look less like turkey legs and more like crane legs. So we're going to fold this in half, take the outside edge, and fold it almost to the center line. And this is getting harder because the paper's getting thicker. 
Now, if you're using office paper at home or wrapping paper, the thicker the paper you have, the harder it is. I'm going to give you a little hint it, it, at the very tip here. Yes, it can look beautiful at this point to have that exactly folded in half, but it's not necessary. You can just leave the end at the very end not folded. Um, it doesn't have to be folded all the way. I'm going to do the extreme. If you fold it all the way like that, it looks good here, but your next step will be harder. So I recommend just backing it up a little bit and having this end have a little bit of open space there. It will make the next step. Though actually, right now, what we just did here, folding our legs in half to make them thinner, we're going to repeat that step three times, so it's going to be done a total of four times. Symmetry, or doing the same thing on both sides, is very common in origami. There we go. And then when you're done with that, like before, turn it over, do the same thing on the back. So fold the outside edge in and along. And again, at the very end here, I'm going to let our camera person come down and look at that. It does not need to be all the way closed up at the very end. And then do the same thing on the other side. Okay, anybody tired yet? There's at least 16 steps in the crane. So... Um, it can be, and it's a lot of focusing. Okay, now what we're going to do, we are almost done. That's the good news. So we have our legs. We are going to fold, they're soon going to become a neck and tail. We're going to do a kind of sideways fold on both sides. This is again a pre-crease, so we're creasing it before to make the next step easier. So it, the next step, and then from there, after you do that pre-crease, you can take the legs down again. Now this next step is hard. It's called an inside reverse fold. Um, what we're going to do, so it's kind of like tucking your pocket back inside of your pants or something if your pocket's hanging out. So we're going to, here I'm going to open the side, bring the point up, fold it down the other direction, well, and then close. Um, find, find your old, find your pre-crease that you did. There we go. I'm going to do it a different way on the other side. I like to just kind of tuck it inside. And then you see, so that's the reverse, and then close again on that crease. This is hard if you don't know how to do an inside reverse fold. I'm going to show you that again. So basically you're trying to take this and stick it inside of the wings. So bring it up, and if you did strong creases earlier, it kind of wants to go there all by itself. And this is not a new crease, you're just reversing the previous crease. There we are. So it looks like that. Now, next step, we can decide which end we want to be the head and which we want to be the tail. I'm going to choose this side to the head. I think they both look pretty good. So again, think you can fold over to do a pre-crease again and then open it back up again and you're going to reverse that. So tuck it. Do you see? Tuck it inside, reverse the crease and close it down. And there is your nose, your head. And for the 
wings, there's a couple of choices. You can end up with a, I'll, first I'll show you, fold a wing down on that side and fold it again, turn it over again on the other side. You can end up with a crane with a pointy center, like that. Or you can, from underneath, pull, put your hands underneath and kind of gently pull down. This is hard. And pull, pull, pull slowly. Slowly kind of pull down and you can open up your crane to have like some air of full body in the center. Like that. There you are. And there's your finished crane. Thank you all for coming. Let's see if we have any questions. Okay. How are we doing? Um, I can't see. No questions. Uh, no questions? Okay. I'm going to show you a couple other things here. So, for a challenge, for a challenge, I'm going to show you, here are, the smaller you go, the harder it is. Oh, maybe it's easier to see here in my little box. So these are some cranes that I have made. This is from a one inch square. This is a square of Japanese fabric paper. So it's heavy paper. And then I fold it down into this size crane. Um, this is from smaller than, this is probably about a three quarter of an inch size piece of paper that I folded. And those little hints where I said to not fold it all the way to the center line, like here, just fold it close, but not all the way in. Um, and here, fold it close and not all the way in, then that's good. Um, especially if you have smaller paper or heavier paper. Oh, here's a little one inch crane, also the Japanese fabric paper. And uh, let's see, you can see some of my art. Um, I invent origami to look like our world. So farmers markets and corn mazes and parks. Uh, you can see a lot of my art, 24, uh, 30, 32 pages of my art in my new picture book, The Day We Went to the Park. You can see this is a whole scene of a park and it's all made with origami um, and I use Japanese handmade papers also so it's a 3d scene and you can look learn more about my book at the day we went to the park dot com I'd like to thank the blue stem Montessori elementary school for this challenge and the gift that they have given to Lincoln. Um, the process of making the crane through folding, slowly, slowly, step by step, just the process in itself is healing and relaxing, at least once you figure out how to do it. Yes, question? First three steps. You need to see the first three points. All right, let's start over again. Okay. So it's easiest to have, to see, at least for teaching purposes, um, two, a paper with two colors. It doesn't really matter if your paper is two colors. You can use um, a square. You start with a square. The first two steps are basically rectangle, rectangle, triangle, triangle. So let's see, where's, where's those things at? So first we're going to 
you start with a square and with the color side out or whatever side you want to have your final outside be oh yeah here we are the final outside fold your paper in half into a oopsie rectangle and this you the paper on the outside is the color that you want your crane to be and then you open the rectangle back up again turn it around the other direction you're going to be making a cross and uh, like a T sign and fold it in half again into a rectangle and then open it up again now from here flip your paper over and fold it in half into a triangle and it's important with all of these what we're doing right now are called pre creases that you line up very carefully along the edge so the tips of your point should be close together the edges should be lined up very nicely if you fold it in half into a triangle like this then later when you try to get to the primary base it's going to be messy so make sure that you fold it as precisely as you can now one challenge you do not need to use origami paper but sometimes it's hard to make a square um, a proper square all by yourself so that is one advantage of that though I'll quickly show you how to make a square too so that's rectangle rectangle triangle triangle and now we're gonna go back open it up again with the color on the outside open your square all the way up again and now you think square 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 and you let the paper that you just did fold itself down. And the reason I say square, square, square is there's an, this is called a primary base. There is also a primary base that's used for making, say, a butterfly. I'm going to confuse you now. And, oops, for that one you think triangle, 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 triangle and you come up with this shape. We don't want a triangle now. We want a square. And this is a double layered square. So one place it sometimes people go wrong. So you let the paper fold itself down. One place sometimes people go wrong is they go like that. And then you don't have the double layers you end up with a small square shape, but you need to have these layers. Let's see if that helps. And then this is, so see, you have the flaps at the front and the flaps at the back. And then for your next step, you need to make sure that you fold in where the flaps are. So pretend there's a tornado coming along, you tie everything down, you put it away, so you need to cover up the flap end. If you fold it from the other direction, see it looks the same, but you're gonna run into a dead end. You'll just be stuck. So do not do that. <laughs> see if that helps. Any other questions there? Oh, and people, please um, add your crane count, whatever you make. You can send a message to the Blue Stem uh, Elementary School Facebook page, which is where you are right now. You can just send a message there and how many cranes you've made, if it's one, or if it's two, or if it's five, or I just had a friend uh, 
who I taught origami crane to a long time ago, and she gave us 150 that she's made over the last five years. And they can be any size, and um, the students are collecting them until May 21, which is the last day of school. Though it's looking like they're probably going to reach their goal on making 1,000 cranes this week. So thank you all. Any other questions? Well, happy folding to everyone, and thank you for coming. And yes, please let us know on the Facebook page how many you've made, and happy folding, and thank you for working to heal Lincoln and the world.